All right, we're back from our drive and I'm like, we don't have first or second, it has drive. It has a 350 gear out back, so quite frankly, it doesn't feel like it's missing a whole lot by not having those other two gears, but you wanna have them, obviously, because that means that your C4 is not functioning correctly. I'm gonna caveat everything we're gonna be doing today by saying this, we are not transmission guys. We don't know the inner workings of these greatly. Cam is better at it than I am, but we're gonna try to go through here and give you some diagnostics things to look at on your own before you finally call time of death and say, I need to take this thing to a transmission shop to get them to look at the internals because there's something going on in there. These are fairly simple transmissions on the inside, but it's not something I would wanna tackle on my own. Cam is more than happy to dive into one. If this one proves to be a big pain in the butt and it doesn't wanna do what we want it to do, we'll go ahead and grab the other C4, throw it up in here and take this one and pull it apart and then try to put it back together and see if we can make it work. Kind of like a 12 year old <laughs> with a clock or a carburetor, right Jackson? Yeah, Jackson's still asleep, he was at a party. One thing I'm noticing right now is the manual lever right here is too short. This is actually out of something else. There's a part number typically on these transmissions right about here and it'll let you know what that's for. Now this one is uh, possibly a Mustang, but I'm not real sure. This is not the original transmission to this car, so we don't know. And a lot of people assume that you can just plop a C4 from a 66 Mustang into a, a later Torino or whatever, and it's gonna be fine, but that's not the case. You do have specific manual shift levers for these cars. This one should have a Torino shift lever, and it's like a D-O-B-A-P, I think, uh, part number on it. We're gonna get one of those on order. I'm showing you one of those right now, and it is a lot different out than this one is. It actually comes out further. Now this bracket that's right here is uh, a bracket that Ford set up to use a cable operated shifter. Ford before that was using a mechanical linkage that went from the inner frame rail over to the transmission and down to this um, manual shift lever right here. This is a completely different setup. This is a correct bracket for a C4 but the mounting procedure that's been done to it, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that's not right. Uh, there's a big kink in the cable, which tells me that the thing may need to be somewhere else on the transmission. I'm showing you a diagram right here from the Ford service manual that shows that actual bracket and the mounting, but the transmission visual on it is so sketchy, I can't tell if that's how it's supposed to be. If you know, a C4 and a 74 on up Torino would have to be. I think 72 and 73 would be the same thing as well. I don't think there's any real difference in that. Uh, let me know, send me a couple photographs on it. I'd like to see what you've got. Um, but that's a problem because it's not necessarily shifting where it's supposed to shift because of how this is set up. We don't know that that's our issue, but uh, we're gonna kind of keep moving through this thing and, and talking about what we have. All right, so next thing to look at is our modulator valve. Now this isn't exactly going to create our problem uh, with not shifting out of third, but this will affect shift points, shift firmness, and overall drivability of the transmission. This one is a dual vacuum line, um, and I believe it is a red stripe. This is used primarily for vehicles equipped with EGR. Um, you can get adjustable ones, different color stripes. Each one of them has different characteristics on how it reacts to vacuum signal. Um, so do your own research. You can also get an adjustable one, which is probably the best thing for you. If you like playing, <laughs> if you like tuning your car in, that's the adjustable one's probably the way we'd go. But I don't believe this is our problem. I believe our problem is either in the shift linkage, uh, putting it into the wrong gear selection or inside the transmission something's not allowing it to come out a third which i believe would be the valve body um but that's for further on down the line but that's the modulator isn't it cute all right so we're gonna <laughs> cam can't remember and i can't remember if we checked the uh, uh transmission fluid on this thing whenever we bought the car so we're gonna check it again so you, with these kind of cars you want to have it you have to start it and hopefully keep it running.
the exhaust leaks are better, they're not great. Transmission fluid looks good. Kind of hoping it was a little low. That would have made it a lot easier. So the next thing we're going to do is going to be very sketchy. We're going to try to shift this thing to an in-between to where it seems like it's going in to drive the normal position. And we're going to take it out for a swing. We don't have a lot of gas in it, so I'm hoping we can make it back. I'm gonna drop the hood. This is a big car. That's drive, theoretically. We'll see what she does. Got Cam in the car here with me. I'm gonna go through this thing. We're gonna take it out for a little run. Go down the road, see what it'll do. It'll shift. See, that feels like second. Gotta shift that time. It doesn't feel like it's shifting down in the first. Nah, that was first. That was first? Yeah. Okay, Cam says it was first. Second won't come out. Get that high RPM to about 20. transmission a little bit in order to get it to do what we want it to do but um, it's shifting down and everything it's not seeming to be a problem so that's good in one level we got a we got less of an issue than I thought we had all right now we're going to take a light run with it first to second sounds more like modulator to me okay that uh because the modulator is going to change the shift point and the shift aggression when you're putting load on it, it i mean that that was about 25 to 50 percent throttle the first yeah, pass wasn't much. yeah the first pass i wasn't all the way on the floor but i was hot yeah so that shift timing was about right but there it should have shifted way earlier yeah it should have been it should have floated through the gears quick yeah it did not so do you think we should just put an earlier modulator with a different yeah i'd go to an adjustable or just a different a factory modulator 
Uh, let's look at some adjustable ones uh, and we'll talk about it here in a second. Okay, that does make me feel a little bit more encouraged about that C4 because it sounds to me like we have an issue with the shifter in the car as well as a modulator issue which are fairly cheap to fix. If we had a problem with the internals on the transmission and it wasn't shifting at all no matter what, we'd be in trouble because we would, if we didn't have a C4 on hand already, we would have to go into this C4 and do some work to it. So, put it in park, shut it off. I'm just gonna leave the key in it because let's face it, I don't think anybody's gonna come in the yard and steal it while we're off. So, it is not as bad as we thought. Yeah, uh, there still might be direct drive clutch gappage happening in there. Um, the clearances might be too much, uh, but it didn't exhibit a slip shit. <coughs> yes, <laughs> slip shit. <laughs> it, it didn't shard you, itself. You, <laughs> you slipped the shift yeah, right yeah, there, yeah, but yeah, it, yeah. it's doing fine. So we figured pretty much what we what we had originally thought was that because of what it was exhibiting when I drove it, yeah. not realizing there was a problem with the selector. Yeah. When you drove it, it might have been in manual second. Or and that's all it yeah. was, and it wouldn't go anywhere else. Because like I said, it would go like stink, but it just never shifted. Yeah. Today, I was very much more careful about putting it into shift or into drive, and then we got a one, two, three out of it. All the three was at 3,000 RPM. Yeah. It, it took a while, and when we light-footed it coming back, it didn't shift at third. Yeah, it shifted only into first and second. We went from first to second normally, where it should shift first yeah. to second on a low speed or a low throttle input. And then third, we just kept waiting, and we finally got to the driveway, and it had never shifted. Yeah. And we were all the way up to 2,500 RPM. And you even let out of it all, completely to let it downshift, and it didn't. And it, yeah, so it didn't do shift. all the things that you would want to normally do. Like I said, if you have a problem with one, and you're trying to get it to, to do that, to shift, sometimes you can lift your foot off the accelerator and dip back in, and that will cause it to shift into third gear. It didn't do that. So we're hoping that some of that will be fixed with a, a single port modulator. We have yeah. one here in the studio that my Uncle Bill just brought over the other day and said, you might need this after having watched the video on buying this car and talking about the sham transmission problems. Modulator, probably your biggest possibility for shifting problems. You're still not completely sold on that, but... Um, yeah, I'm not. Because um, when you're the, saying... All, all the shift points should be wrong then. If the, yeah, mod exactly. the modulator is messed yeah. up, everything, it should either shift super, super soft or super, super hard and late. Your diag on it is that you have, we're having a problem with um, the valve body. Uh, I wonder, yeah, I wonder if the third gear shuttle valve is a little bit sticky. And when you don't have enough line pressure behind it from engine load demand, it's not wanting to shove the valve over to allow the shift. <laughs> what are you talking about? Says we're going to go in and while well, we're here, yeah, 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 yeah. the saga never ends. <laughs> never ends. <laughs> so we are go, we do want to go in and replace the shifter uh, manual well, shift lever first, to make it right. Of, yeah, first of all, we got to do the modulator. The trans fan is leaking. Might as well replace the gasket. Yeah. When we're going to do the shift arm, we might yeah. as well go ahead and, and the replace valve the valve body with the valve body might have to come down. So a shift kit is like twenty five bucks, and it comes with the gasket that you need for the valve body. So why not put a shift kit in it? And you don't have to get a fancy one that's like race and all that stuff, but yeah. yeah. How much is that? It's like 20 bucks. And the shift arm that we found is 39, yeah. $49. You're recuperating what you bargained out of. <laughs> that's, that's where this is going. It's going back into yeah. the car. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, I'm still happy. I, yeah. I still like what I got. Yeah. Even with the changes that we're going to be making and some of the things that we're going to be doing, I'm not unhappy. Yeah, even as it is right now, you could probably drive it. Just well, a little, I could, yeah, little bit heavy foot and it'll to... shift into third. <laughs> and now it's starting to exhibit a carburetor problem. Yeah, yeah, that's another thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's starting to fight back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me die! It's regretting leaving that carport. <laughs> That easy life. It yeah. just sat there yeah. all the time. Hey, look, they're taking the LTD yeah, you're out. You're sanding nice. on it. You're making it shiny. <laughs> it's getting mad. Yeah. So you were treating it nice. Uh, it up. One real quick thing before we go. We just got a new Jib Crane in, or not got it in, 
we actually built it a couple of months back and it's working magnificently. If you're a Patreon guy, go ahead and check it out. It's kind of cool. Uh, Darren's going to be putting a video up of us basically working on the gym and getting it set up. So Patreon guys, go check that out. I guess that's it though. We are now officially at the end of the video. Yeah. Because we've done everything we can do on that. And I let him loose underneath the car and he found <laughs> other things. Yeah. A lot of bushing. It's overall though, it's very clean. I don't, I don't like letting him loose on anything like this because he's walking around with a flashlight yeah. like he's doing a DOT inspection. That's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> anytime I get like under a your DOT car, that's, inspection, yeah. like, oh, I'm like, yeah. Ooh, I'm like, great, dang, I can just watch the money going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Making that work order go. It <laughs> <laughs> rolls out onto the floor <laughs> into the next county. Get two scrolls. <laughs> All right, folks, y'all be kind to each other, alone each other, treat each other nice. We'll see you next time on Auto Resto Mod. I'm leaving. Yeah, before I find more stuff. <laughs>